All right, uh, Greenland's family, this is Bomani Tayamba, and welcome to our Africa tour conference call uh, for Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, and Ghana. And today is uh, Sunday, July 12th, and we're here to go through the basic uh, information that was sent uh, via email uh, from either MailChimp or from my uh, business uh, email. And uh, the title is Africa Tourist Conference Call, Sunday, July 12th, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, and Ghana. And so those are also all of the uh, list of tours that we have on our website. Uh, that way, uh, anyone that has any interest or need any clarity as far as schedule, they can view those details. All right, so family, this is Bomani Tamba, your tour organizer, and also um, your tour leader uh, on the uh, journey itself. And as usual, anyone that has any questions and so on, they can always email me or send me a message uh, in relevance. So what we talk about, if you don't get a chance to, add, you know, to ask questions or don't get a chance to get your question answered or just need to have a personal conversation. All right, so what we have set up uh, uh, this conference call, you can either download the conference call app or you can do the dial-in number. Uh, either way, we have it set as an audio conference call. And all the other previous conference calls have been uh, saved on the uh, email playlist on YouTube entitled Africa Tours and Investments. Uh, so when you scroll down to this um, newsletter that you receive, you also see the conference call recording link. And the conference calls go back um, a few years. And once you all scroll down, before you actually get to the topic, uh, it will be the list of the different tours that we have coming up. So everything is set for once you click on the link, then you get access to the full information, which uh, we won't go over in details, but every tour link represents 100% of the tour information, including your full tour itinerary, general terms, tour overview, preparation information, and visa information if necessary, and maybe one or two other files, including uh, recommendation to build your immune system, which we went over more so the last time. That way you can process more of a natural way to get your you know, self as immunity uh, efficient as possible. All right, and uh, also all of those uh, tour links have schedules as far as flight schedules of the group itself, um, the country we leave from, uh, directly to uh, where we're going and the flight times and everything because these are the same schedules that we book. All schedules have confirmed flight uh, contracts uh, with Delta Airlines. So as more people join in each tour, uh, we add you to the flight schedule. And um, months to two months before the flight, then all tickets are paid for in full. Uh, beyond that, it's just reservations. And then uh, reservations are finalized based on uh, final communication uh, and paying for uh, the ticket itself. So what you have is just, uh, again, it's 100% of the information that uh, once you get these newsletters, once you scroll through it, you can be pre-prep and clear of anything you need to be clear on. And this is the same information that's also on our site as it reroutes you to our website. Photos and videos. Um, uh, all the photos are on Facebook right there at uh, facebook.com forward slash Bomani. And it's all of the previous tours from 2006 to 2019, uh, December. And you can just scroll through it for clarity. And then same thing with the videos. There's different playlists of different tours itself and also different aspects of the tours uh, or different you know, major uh, sites. Uh, so lots of videos also to look at and to be clear on and... We're just finalizing the last set of videos from our Ghana tour, and once you get a chance to get to Senegal and the Gambia, the same thing, we'll just have lots of documentation, and uh, the same thing with South Africa. All right, so uh, what I have is a list of uh, conference call topics, which uh, we're not going to go through directly, because uh, I want to open things up for more questions and answer. Uh, so the, the latest update that uh, we have right now is for our July 24th tour to uh, Senegal and Gambia. Now, schedule we rearranged back in March uh, 
Delta Airlines group booking told us those flights would not go out and we have to reschedule. So a few months later now, we're dealing with the same drama. So I'm hearing a lot about July 15th uh, from a, st a standpoint of uh, West Africa to also um, uh, European countries as far as borders being open and uh, flights being able to resume. So it's one of those, one of those situations where that's kind of close and then also um, got feedback from a tour guide in Senegal as far as hotels are looking to open up in the next few days. So it's a little too close. So and so the worst case scenario we're dealing with since July 24th may be too close is having this to wait uh, till the end of the month and then well, between now and then, once we get a clear schedule of when countries are open up, then we can physically just plan out our route, and then we can be on our way in August to Senegal and the Gambia. And for those who just not feeling that or not feeling, you know, get up and make your move there because of different situations, uh, we have different tour dates. So the next set of tours that we have is South Africa in November. Uh, Ghana in December, uh, Senegal and Gambia again in April. Uh, so you can just transfer your tour and that will save you from losing your money. And in a situation with tickets, um, we do our best to, you know, to get your refund back. But the best thing to do once you pay for your trip is just to give it time. And the main thing I explained is just build your immune system. And, uh, you know, we just flow through our energy of our tour. But life has to go on regardless of how people feel about COVID-19 and this uh, whole coronavirus uh, drama. Uh, so this is us moving forward and uh, other people who have made a decision not to move forward, they have sent email and request refunds and every email that has been requested has been sent, uh, relative refunds have been processed based on what is refundable based on the general terms. So it's another thing I want to explain to everyone again, please read the general terms of anything you do in tours, investments, uh, cancellation, refund policy, that way you're clear. Because in these situations, you know, we have no choice but to keep moving forward. And that's the standpoint of someone like myself. I've been around a lot of people where we try to make moves in Africa and do certain things. And most of them are gone from, you know, back in the time, you know, started trying to do certain things with the exception of one or two people. So um, I get to the point where I don't take it personal uh, and never did, but uh, even so much more. So if you, know, if you want to keep traveling with us and want to keep um, the itinerary and the commitment you made, I will say go for it and we'll do our best. I'll be there with you. My child will be there. The rest of my staff and crew will be there. Um, and, you know, we'll be there to look out for you, make sure you enjoy what you pay for. Uh, but we're not here to force you based on a situation where you, you know, may be watching the news and you see a bunch of things going on. It's all confusing to me, um, and I only know one thing in life, is to keep moving forward and keep holding the line and keep doing what needs to be done as far as us building a future in Africa. And it's the same thing I, I share with the group members in uh, our community that um, since we all can, let's go to Ghana. We just work on what we need to work on now and then get ourselves prepared and organized and make our, whether it's our tour or investment or both, as fruitful as possible. All right, uh, so uh, that's kind of the way it's uh, looking. And for South Africa, the same situation. Try my best to hear documentation from the Ministry of Tourism. Um, you hear a lot of things about different dates and things, but you know you don't hear certain things confirmed. But the best we can do is we can hold our schedule and not make certain decisions. And if we have to reschedule, we just honestly deal with rescheduling and and so on. And the same thing for Ghana in December. That was already adjusted with another tour in May to make that one work. Uh, so all schedules are go with exception of this coming up uh, schedule to Senegal and Gambia until we reschedule it. Uh, but just keep in a positive mindset and, you know, once again, I don't want to honestly just force people to do anything they don't want to do. Um, but, and individuals do have to make up their mind. But I would say just keep the energy going as far as what you're looking to do because then next thing you know, we begin to live a life of fear where we want to lock ourselves in our homes and don't want to do certain things or we're scared to touch people or we're scared or we, you know, and so on. 
and things like that. So um, we all have different beliefs of what's going on and things, and and that's and that's fine. So um, moving forward from that, uh, the next set of things that um, uh, that we have is just other countries that we're looking to deal with. Uh, that's not an itinerary in countries like Tanzania and in, in Rwanda. Tanzania is currently open. So any country that wanted to play games and don't want to get themselves set up, then you know, we'll start looking at other options. So other co some countries are going to lose out opportunities uh, based on other countries being open. That's one of the backup I have in case we just need to replace a country with another country and just kind of keep it moving. Uh, so those two countries that countries I plan on just adding on to our schedule in 2021 or in 2020-22 or whenever we have availability. Uh, so I'll be working on those itineraries and adjusting them from previous itineraries that I've created in the past and just kind of be on standby. Uh, but uh, right now, you know, uh, West Africa is supposed to be working to open up Southern Africa and knowing we know what's really going on. And East Africa, as I mentioned, few countries are opening up. We all know as much as possible with each other, um, but there are certain flight routes that are still allowed to go to you know, in Africa. Example, I have associates that's going to Senegal, same country we're going to. They're taking a complete different route. So the, the route they're taking up, that country is open to traveling to Senegal. So our issue is uh, France. And also our issue is, you know, uh, Delta being open to having a direct flight directly to Senegal. So it's an unfortunate wait and things like that, but uh, this, the best thing we could do is deal with it versus being like other people who have completely canceled their bookings for the rest of the year and a focus on next year. And one of the people that don't give up as easy. All right, so family, uh, before I open up for questions, uh, the list of topic uh, information is just talking about the documentation that I, I just talked about and uh, all of the information on each tour link. Uh, tickets, um, which we have reservations for everyone, and uh, we have confirmed tickets for us leaving for Senegal in, um, I guess, uh, in, in, uh, July 24th if something magically happened, um, but if not, this in August. Uh, so the airlines um, will change our tickets. Uh, that's the agreement that we have. So that's one of the good things is because we have to keep flight schedules. Um, we have to keep investing in flight schedules because you can't have a tour if you don't have uh, you know, people with guaranteed tickets because people don't want to just book tickets on their own and they pay twice as much because it's sometimes a mercy to the craziness out there. Right, and also in preparation for our tours in the future, uh, especially to Ghana, we're looking to connect with an orphanage outside of the uh, investment uh, project that we have, uh, Black Star Pan-African Community, uh, so to be a part of the public relations connection and us, you know, uh, and supporting our community and just building that relationship. Uh, any kind of school supplies, uh, financial donations, or just clothing, uh, all of that is all good. And the last thing uh, before I open up, uh, we do have a repatriation investment conference that's for Ghana only, and the goal is to build an energy in the other countries to where you just network with different people. That way people that are looking to live and do business in that specific country can have good connections and things like that. So that's uh, what you always see, uh, but that was mainly set up for that uh, connection that we originally just wanted to just work out in Ghana as a way to just get our group members and other people that are looking to connect with us already. And, um, yeah, but the goal is just to keep building the future, so there's uh, no limitations. But that's the only uh, setup that we have, like a real nice organized conference, which is what we record and upload on YouTube once we return. All right, so that is a list of the 15 different things that we have, and that's kind of like a uh, process through uh, that we can address the, the you know, more relevant questions as far as what's going on and people who have been different questions. So hopefully the overview of everything kind of answer it. And uh, below this is just the, the link to the conference call as far as if you just want to join the online meeting where you can use your webcam and your microphone. Um, but um, 
have this as a simple conference call where you can just always dial in. But um, what I do is usually screen sharing as I scroll through. So not everybody can see this um, um, since you're not on screen sharing. But the next set of things that we have is this, um, the different Facebook groups. So when you scroll down, you see previous tour groups. And then you see the links for uh, Senegal, the Gambia, Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, and Ghana, as far as Facebook groups. So it's a public group. Uh, just, you just add yourself, and the goal is just to share uh, documentation, updates, and conference call. And then when we go on that specific tour, to sh uh, share as many pictures and videos as possible. And then the other private situation that we have is the private WhatsApp group for each uh, tour itself, where um, all information is posted on there and then the email list. So the goal is to get you, to keep you posted on all uh, the tours and different things that we do, uh, that way you're in touch. But it's all up to you to keep in touch and to check information out. Add yourself on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, uh, you're not on Facebook. Uh, and then the mandatory situation we have is just WhatsApp. Uh, so we at least want everyone to download WhatsApp, uh, add a profile photo, and then uh, once you start doing group introductions, you introduce yourself, you, you know, post your photo, and then we do live. Um, now we do video calls as far as private video calls for that specific group, unlike Zoom. So those are the things that we have just to get everyone in touch and organized. That way, you know, you don't just show up in the country. Uh, you at least know people ahead of time. And then uh, naturally, once we get to the uh, airport, we'll start introductions again and connecting people and so on. So that's the full flow of everything. The main thing is just to be clear on everything. Make sure you read through it. And um, once you commit and send payments, then you'll get a receipt and you keep up with that receipt. And then we'll just keep you posted. Uh, so uh, when you scroll down some more, you see all the, the social pages, Facebook, Twitter, website, Instagram, YouTube, and email. Uh, so that is just all of our documentation and information. So what I want to do, family, is put everybody in regular mute mode. And uh, you're going to press star six to unmute yourself. And for those who just want to type their questions in the chat, you just type it in. And once I, um, I'll keep looking up. And once I see it, I'll just uh, read it off and then uh, answer it. All right, so family, hopefully everybody can hear me. So you're all in mute mode. Star six to unmute yourself. Give your name, where you're calling from, and your question, and the tour that you're going on. All right, I'm sure everybody got some very important questions in reference to traveling. Um, we have about another 20, 30 minutes. We can go through all of it. Yeah, peace, my mom. It's Warren Green uh, going to South Africa. All right, excellent. Uh, greetings, uh, Warren. How are you? How's the day going? I'm great, brother. Yeah, the, um, um, what are we using? you monitoring the different... Um, are you monitoring the U.S. Uh, against the countries? Because mostly nobody wants the U.S. people to come into their country because of this uh, corona outside. So we, you monitoring the countries that we're going into, uh, governments to let the United States into their country. That, oh, that's yes, what ab absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's on you doing that, what, daily, weekly, or you get an announcement, or how, how are you doing that? Uh, yes, example, um, uh, like in Senegal, I have a good brother with my business uh, associates. Uh, he's leaving for Senegal on Monday, so even in that situation, me and him have talked in reference to him getting himself ready and having to adjust his tickets and uh, change countries and things like that, and also uh, talking directly to our tour guide, and different associates that we have, and it's, uh, it's you know sometimes it's just every other day or every other week or or so on, and uh, you know you're just doing your best to get updates, and also you go into the the different uh, countries' uh, embassy website and also their their airport website. You're looking at schedules going on out, and then uh, then the main thing is when we call our folks in Delta, you know you're trying to find out what is the best option as far as just literally 
uh, get into Senegal, get into Ghana, get into South Africa. Uh, so uh, the issue with uh, Senegal is going to be France because the flight leave from France. So they'd have to be open to U.S. travelers, and then Senegal would have to be open to U.S. and European travelers. So um, right now, um, I'm hoping that if we wait another, uh, maybe another a week or two or the end of the month, we should get uh, some level of a little bit more uh, clarity. Yeah, I, I have three three friends. They Tanzania is open. They left from last week from the U.S. to uh, uh, Tanzania, and so yeah, they, they the Tanzanians are letting in U.S. Uh, people into their country. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I sent a, I'll put on this WhatsApp about the uh, travel noir. They put out a piece that they that they do the same thing and their travel site, and they said that South Africa is looking at September to open up. Like you say, it's not confirmed. It's just this is what they're projecting to do. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to know how you're monitoring the difference. And I, I would put my vote down to yes and add on a uh, Tanzania and a Zanzibar uh, trip if you can. I, that's one of the what I want to do. So if you're looking, I know you say Rwanda also. That's another one I want to do also. So I definitely put a thumbs up on on all of all of those trips. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Appreciate it. And uh, I meant to actually call you uh, over the weekend also, and you know, kind of just get your feel because uh, someone sent me a post about South Africa not being open until February next year. And you know, you know me, I'm not going to be one of emotional people and and, and scare folks. So I told him that well. The, the issue with the you know the article is that there's no reference to the Ministry of Tourism when you go to the Ministry of Tourism or the airport or the, the government site or or any entity connected with you know being responsible for flights going in and out of the country. Uh, so when you told me September, and I, I realized that more than likely it was one of those panic situations. But like you you mentioned, in uh, Tanzania is open, so that's a blessing because that forces you to open your mind up to your economy because people are, you know, most of the countries that we're dealing with, especially in the developing countries with beautiful uh, climates and beautiful, uh, you know, uh, oceans or beach access, um, you know, they're going to they're gonna depend or be uh, have a nice focus on tourism. And uh, so Tanzania opening that up, uh, if South Africa decides to do that move and move to February, then they lose a lot of their people to... Uh, Tanzania, so uh, it's good to see that yeah. he's coming out, and um, we know when to hear back from Ghana and you know the, the other countries. But um, you know, if worse come to worse, you know that's one option that you say, hey, this is a schedule I have for Tanzania or Rwanda. I can change it out with this schedule if people want to leave because I'm dealing with the, the same trip that we're dealing with. Um, that's where I'm getting all of the cancellations from South Africa. Um, so several yeah. people live done that but we all we had a big group in general so we still have 20 something people uh, but the best thing um, I would recommend uh, individuals do is just, uh, just give some of these countries a little time it's an overwhelming situation you have to deal with regardless of our, our belief on COVID-19 or not countries still have to this, you know, do certain things so um, you know we all hope by now it will be all clear but uh, the good thing about it uh, we've seen little by little phases opening up uh, little by little and the leverage I talk about with other countries being opened up will force other people to step their game up yeah I think it's more the, uh, the US I mean that I think these other countries because every, everybody else has uh, flattened their curve the US is the only out of control the US is I mean we out of you know 180 something countries there's only three that's like you know, just out of control, and so that's that's the the fear part, like you said earlier, the fear part. I mean, you know, so uh, I I just think the people are not no U.S. Y'all can't come to these, but Tanzania, like I said, opened up because I know three sisters. They they there. They on Facebook showing all the people. Nobody got masks on. They just <laughs> they going about daily business. You know, and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, you know, five people get it or whatever. You know, they isolate them and keep doing business. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, 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 you know, the, the paranoia. But I just wanted to know how you monitoring. You know, and you gave a good answer of all the different avenues you're monitoring.
to, to see what and then uh, make a decision from that, which is fair. That's all you can do. You have done an excellent job, in my opinion, brother, of uh, trying to balance all of this uh, that's going on. So I commend you. I want you to stay strong, keep doing what you're doing, man. I, I support you 100%, brother. Uh, absolutely, Warren, uh, uh, and looking forward to uh, hanging out with you in all those other countries. Uh, and you know, we definitely can talk about it uh, as you know, work something where with other folks who are looking to be out of school, or, you know, around the same time and you know, can go. Uh, so you know, uh, the spring break uh, schedule and just gotta look at the holidays, yeah. and then also ultimately summertime. That's where I don't really have schedules. But perfect, so I definitely keep in touch All right, brother. and um, I'll post any updates with the South Africa in the group and if you have any updates or anything you want to share, you know, you're always welcome to share it yeah. so all of us could be educated. So, what, so how, like, and, oh, just to conclude is, so are you, um, like you're doing the 1 for July, so it's like two weeks out, so say if, if you don't have an answer by what amount of time before the actual trip, to say no, or how are you going up to the week, or how are you, what is the buffer between making a decision to go or not go? So you have a kind of yeah, you need, you need at least two weeks. Um, uh, that's a lot of, okay. which is very close, uh, but we're hoping to not do it that long. But um, the, the, the situation with our uh, Senegal journey is that we can't change, you know, we don't have the we, we don't really have options of dates to give because we, you know, until we get a confirmed date. Uh, but as far yeah. as the other countries, you know, we're still a few months out. But even in those right. situations, at least one to two months, don't want to hold people on. So, you know, we're just hoping in a uh, worst case scenario that all these countries will be open up in August and some that are a little more cautious or a little more paranoid will open up in September. And we just kind of... Right. Uh, keep it moving, but uh, it's always up to the folks that we're dealing with. That's not trying to get us all in the uh, the group WhatsApp page. So if we need to discuss anything, we can kind of just communicate or on this call. All right. Thank you, brother. All right. Uh, absolutely, Juan. Appreciate your energy. So uh, let me, uh, you can just meet yourself and then next person. Um, let me just, uh, next person, can you hold? And uh, Juma, I'm going to unmute you. All right, uh, Juma, um, you're unmuted um, at the uh, meet your line. Yeah. So I, I wanted to be um, to be clear about something. You said, or were you saying that you had other optional dates to go to Santa uh, to Senegal later on in the year? Uh, no, the optional date we have is next month. Uh, but uh, the other countries are next in other countries. August. Uh, so next time we have also is April. And then, you know, April of next year. So trying to just have something so like at, for those who want to leave. So if we can't get out in August of this year, the next option is next year in April. Yes, and then also if people right. still, uh, yes, but also if a set of people still want to go and then we can create another set of dates that, you know, in, in August, September, then we'll do that, uh, trying to yeah. not deny people wanting to leave. So even if somebody else wanted to yeah. join us and wanted to leave to go to Africa on a journey, we have something now. And then the other options that we have is yeah. South Africa in December, Ghana in December, and then Senegal and Gambia again in April. And then the goal is to start working in those other countries that I mentioned, like Tanzania and Rwanda, and, and then adjust certain countries to create, you know, upcoming schedule. So I mentioned everyone, since you pay for your ticket already, the best thing to do is just hold on because we can always adjust any of those flight routes to any of the countries that we have on schedule. And whatever money you put towards the yeah, I'm good. it will be saved. Yeah, I'm good with that, you know. Um, but, you know, if, if, if we got to April, if it looked like we had to go to April, I also wanted to stay open to Tanzania and Rwanda because Rwanda's on my bucket list. Yeah, exactly. You know? so, uh, you're trying to uh, lay out a schedule, but, and then they're also there as a backup schedule. So, for example, in South Africa, we just can't leave, and they say that we're not going to open up tourism until, like, February next year. Like, one article I saw, and I was like, that can't be serious. 
um, you would literally right. just like, well, we can't just like not go because the dates are available. So we'd have to just say, hey, those who want to go, but you, you're open to go to Tanzania, this is the schedule. And if you still want to go to South Africa, we have to reschedule it for this time because there's no schedule for this year. You know, so you, you, you're trying to create yeah. flexible options without doing what other people have done, which is saying, hey, they've given up on this year and they're going to try to figure it out next year. But that's up to them. I don't think it's a wise decision. Uh, that's kind of like leaving people out there that want to travel and just telling them to just wait and you don't have anything to offer them when they can travel. You know what, Bomani, I, I'm, I'm, I'm even open to August, too. As long as, like you said, I think you said that you try to give us a two-week buffer window to prepare, right? As long as I've got that, then I'm, I'm pretty much okay. I just wouldn't want to get boxed in to, like, having a week to prepare to leave, you know. Um, you know, I have... You know, as long, I, as, if, if, as long as you can do that, as long as it's about that, the two-week buffer. So August is okay with me. If, if not August, then next year. If, um, if not Senegal at all, then Rwanda and Tanzania to replace it. That's, all that's good for me. All right, perfect. So, yeah, so that's what I am working on here, just keeping things organized and then the biggest thing is to make sure that we get there to Ghana in December so we can see the production of our land and see the future of what we're looking to build. And so anyone right. that's on standby that's uh, looking for uh, a certain set schedule, the Ghana uh, schedule is that's uh, the closest to guarantee schedule that we have that uh, we normally do in, and it's furthest away so it gives the country more time to prepare. All right, cool. So, Juma, uh, appreciate it. So, you are, I know it's like, I know it's like crazy. Is, and then the other thing that people have to be clear about, uh, we can't put ourselves in a situation where we go to a country and then they have a quarantine rule, which doesn't work for us because defeat the purpose. Yeah. Uh, so, it, make sure that and this guy, I'm, mandatory vaccination. Uh, go ahead. I'm glad that you mentioned that because I'm talking to people now who, who, who um, found a way to leave, but now they're stuck in the country that they got to. Some people are stuck in Ghana and they can't get back, right? Uh, so I wouldn't want that to happen either. So that is a situation that we're dealing with people. We literally have to think, and then, um, like I was mentioned earlier, any of us ever want to discuss anything, we have that private uh, WhatsApp group page. Just bring a topic up, and then, you know, let's discuss it. And we all just, you know, send our replies in yeah. and uh, work it out. But uh, right now, the best thing that we have set up is what I've just organized as best as possible to make sure that we're not losing our money on tickets and reservations. And, um, right. and you know, working it out. So uh, let me uh, mute you and open up uh, for other questions. And uh, But uh, uh, let me know if you have anything mm -hmm. else. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bow out. Oh. All right, uh, perfect. Uh, that will work. Okay, I'll talk to you later. All right, uh, take care. All right, uh, greetings, family. So the line is open, so press star six to unmute yourself, your name, where you're calling from, um, your question, and the uh, tour that you're traveling on. Hello, greetings. Uh, greetings, uh, uh, give your okay. name, where you're calling from, your question. Yes, this is Sheila calling from Atlanta. I was scheduled to go to Senegal and Gambia. Uh, greetings, uh, Sheila. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How's everyone? All right. Um, uh, what's up? Yeah, go ahead. Did you call a uh, question? Yeah, here, here, here's my question. I understand everything that you said, and with all due respect, um, with all this uncertainty, I'm not, I'm not really comfortable in waiting till next April. I don't really want to wait that long to travel because the whole idea of Debbie and I traveling was to celebrate our years of friendship. And what I could do is talk to you in private um, if that would be much more appropriate. I can do that. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's open call. Share what you're saying. But also, do remember I addressed certain issues at the beginning that yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Senegal is open. We're going whether it's August or September. Well, well, 
But so I have to have a 2021 options for those people who need to plan ahead. The, the challenge is, um, according to what I've been reading, is that France is not open to the U.S., so I try to monitor it as much as I can. So I don't know. Everything is in question to me, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah, and that's why we're giving it time. So whenever they decide to open up, whether it's uh, August or September, we'll go. I'm prepared to go and prepared to hold the commitment that I've given everyone and then also, I have to think about the people for next year, so I've already set a schedule before the whole lockdown started for April next year. So those are the two options I have for individuals, as best as we can kind of operate. Um, and I, I spoke about a tour guide, and he's on standby um, to, to do what we, you know, we both agree on and what, we are, you know, what money was sent in uh, to us for. Mm -hmm. So... So would would I be able to discuss what my ref you know my refund options would be? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you can okay. uh, send the email and then you and I can talk. Okay. And then, uh, we'll work it out. The flight part of it would have to come from the airline since your booking is paid in full and tickets were purchased out. And then uh, whatever we had for you on um, uh, as far as uh, reservations or booking uh, uh, land package, then that's. And that's uh, set up, and then also there is a cancellation and refund policy, which is still in effect regardless of what acts of God is going on. Uh, and that's why we encourage everyone to transfer to another tour to save themselves from losing any money. Uh, but that uh, cancellation policy is in place. So the, the minimum loss on all transaction is the minimum $400 deposit. Some accounts a little bit more based on, you know, the trip is going on right away and based on a few different things. Uh, so it's in there in the general terms, and that's kind of what I mentioned um, earlier with for everyone and also in other calls. It's important to be clear on the general terms because this is what we have to use in reference to when people want to cancel and refund. So well, it well, it's not. It's, I'm not really canceling because I, I mean I'm not saying that I'm going to cancel, but what I am saying is that the whole idea of me going on the trip it, it was never about me canceling. They, the, they canceled the world, and I was just in it, experiencing this madness. So, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not blaming you, Bomani. I'm just saying my reality is not, you know, in regards to anybody else's experience. I'm, you know, I'm doing this like everybody else because I really want to go. It's never been a time that I did not want to go. It's just all this interference is, you know, it's, un, it's uncertainty that, you know, I have to accept or, or, or not. So that's where I'm coming from. Yes, yeah, so there's two options that we have individuals. Uh, for the person who have a question, if you can uh, mute yourself, and, and I'm trying to finish up with one person, and then just give us a time to finish. Uh, yeah, because well, I'll, money. I'll, call, I'll call you. I'll call well, I mean, what, what you're speaking of is in reference to what I have to explain to everyone else also, so I'm just okay. explaining it. Uh, so everyone have two options, and the people, few people in the South Africa group, they have, they have followed through an option they wanted, which was mm -hmm. they asked for what's the refund uh, option and right. what is the amount and then they accepted it and then we moved forward and then some people decided to stay on the trip and keep going and I'm saying okay. just everyone and just everyone in general for everything that I do in any tours or any investment we have the general terms or cancellation refund policy because of regardless of whatever situation happened uh, we want to be able to address someone for their right to cancel something based on whatever is going on and based on uncertainties. So that's what we have. So, you know, I do my best to, 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 to make sure that everyone get as much as their money back uh, minus the $400 deposit and try not to go beyond that. But it's also based on how much money was sent from the account to, to example, bus, hotels, and things like that. So that's when it becomes a little tricky. So, uh, I, you know, so whatever information is, email it to me and we'll talk in detail okay. and I'll Create, you know, explain the best options that you have. But my goal okay. is to literally work it out for you, Sheila, and other people who have told me directly, which is 90% of our Senegal and the Gambia group, that they want to okay. go. And as soon as it's open, they'll be available in a certain notice. Okay. All right, then. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. All right, so family, that's also for us trying to explain what we're doing as best as possible, which you, know, you send money in for me to manage your account as far as your tour experience, and that's what we do. So our goal is to any kind of loss situation is to minimize it to possible. Uh, so 
it's one of those things that uh, we're gonna, you know, we have your back. Um, and then, you know, so reach out to me, anyone who want to have another private conversation. That way we can make sure it's clear. But my goal is to make sure that you're taken care of. That's my commitment. All right, so the, the last person that was trying to ask a question, if you can unmute yourself, give your name, where you're calling from, and your question, and the tour you're going on. Uh, yes, Mr. Bomani, this is Wilbert from Orlando. I was to do the Ghana trip in May, and uh, I, I changed my mind until December. I uh, I didn't do anything. I remember sending you a text and telling you I was going to change my mind to December. Now, should I have done anything else on myself by calling the airline or anything like that? Uh, Wilbur, thank you uh, for your question. Great question. Uh, you um, Well, you, you kept in touch with what we were talking about, and uh, you informed me. But uh, for those who even didn't inform me, uh, everyone was moved over to uh, the main thing is that everyone is transferred to December because that's the only option that we have. But anyone who don't want to travel in December and want to go like next year, they would have to just let us know. But uh, all the money that you pay towards that tour is transferred directly to the next tour, so your balance is the same for those who have balance. Some people paid it off. And then once we get to October 15th, my goal is to pay Delta Airlines uh, all of the money for the tickets that we will literally you know, th we'll use based on the fact of individuals giving their final confirmation and then Ghana itself being open and things like that. So um, I'm going to keep you posted. I have all of us in the different uh, WhatsApp group page, so uh, that's my way of sending messages and also email updates. Uh, so Robert, let me know if you that answers your questions and let me know if you have another question. Uh, no, um, I, I believe it was the yellow fever shot I took back in probably February or March, and I hear you talking about uh, just the eating the natural herbs and stuff, and I, and I do that. Uh, is, is that good? I mean, are they not going to ask me about anything else? Can I get in the country just by uh, taking care of my own body? Uh, do I have to t is there anything mandatory other than yellow fever that I have to do? Um, yeah, there's no mandatory vaccination at this moment. I'm sure they'll come up with something. Uh, soon, but uh, the yellow fever was always a recommendation. So I've had about 50% of the travelers that travel with us over a little bit over 200 people out of the 400 plus people that have actually had a yellow card, and the other have been able to get in and out of the country. Uh, so until something changes as far as mandatory, then that's kind of you you get a yellow fever based on a recommendation, uh, but it's not mandatory for everyone. Um, so. Uh, the best thing to do as far as, you know, your health and wellness, dealing with uh, malaria or dealing with um, certain kind of issues is to build your immune system. So you're doing something more preventive uh, of maintenance versus uh, trying to cure something when it happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, you've been very helpful. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And we'll definitely keep in touch with everything for December. And uh, Jeffrey, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, hi, Bumani. This is Jeff from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, at the last conference call, you uh, relayed some information that visa, a visa requirement wasn't necessary. Now, all my research shows that uh, it is, and the time increment for that is either three to six months. So can you just refresh us on what the visa requirements are and when we should do it since we're skept we're up in the air as to whether or not this trip will happen in December? Uh, yes, uh, visa requirement is mandatory for everyone, especially a U.S. citizen. I can't speak for anyone else that's a citizen, that's a citizen from any other country. But uh, my, I'm, my, as myself and the rest of our staff and crew, are, and most of the people that travel with us are U.S. citizen, that's mandatory. So uh, information for everyone that's looking to travel to Ghana was sent to everyone that has interest in going to Ghana. Uh, so I'm going to go over it in a second. Uh, but the only thing that's, um, that I mentioned that's not mandatory um, is the yellow fever until there's a mandatory documentation. On the embassy website and uh, the Ministry of Tourism website. So uh, that's what we have to go by and then also anything legal. But as far as the visa itself, uh, if you're traveling to Senegal, uh, in South Africa, you don't need a visa, but if you travel into Ghana 
and the Gambia, you need a visa. So um, both emails are what you have. You print out the visa email application and you print out the sample application in either one of the countries that you're going to. And then uh, what you're going to do in Ghana, you have to fill out uh, one application, sign and date it, then make a copy of it. It's been, things are being done in duplicates with two passwords to a photo. Uh, the Gambia requires one application and one photo. Uh, Ghana multiple entry, which is what we recommend to everyone, is $100. And uh, the Gambia is uh, $200. And uh, then uh, Ghana has a few more requirements, which is you make a copy of your flight itinerary. And also, um, you uh, make sure that you have a copy of like, a bank statement or like a financial report uh, with your name and documentation on there. So those are the, the documentation. And that's why I recommend everyone print out the email checklist and all the files that's sent to the, in, the, in that email. And you print it out. And then if you have any issues, we'll go through it. But beyond that, uh, what you want to do is get a prepaid return envelope and put it in the package with your return address and then put your passport, uh, the money you need to put in there, the application paperwork and so on. And, um, and you know, make copies of the, you know, the package that's going out and things like that. And you know, make, sure you have make sure you have copies of your records of everything in general. And then uh, email it out and it takes a process of seven to 10 days. So the best thing to do is to wait uh, three months before you travel and then apply for that multiple entry visa. Mm -hmm. So those of us that are traveling to Ghana in December, you'd have to wait till I want to say September, October uh, and to get it done. And uh, there's no rush for it. You just do a regular uh, and then you should get it uh, no later than two weeks. Make sure you have outgoing tracking and make sure you have return tracking and just do your best to secure and organize your documents. So that's the best I would recommend about those uh, visa applications and process for Ghana and the uh, Gambia. Okay, in regards to the Ghana, okay, in the Ghana trip, if I purchase my visa, if I register my visa application, submit it in September, and then we decide that the December trip isn't going to happen, I'll have to do the do the whole process over again to cover April. Uh, what you have to do is. Um, once you apply for the visa, you do apply for multiple entry. So you get um, usually you get between three to five years uh, for the multiple entry uh, for Ghana, and the Gambia guarantees you five years uh, for those who are listening for the Gambia. Oh, okay. Uh, so once you have that visa, you're good. Um, and you know the next time you're available to travel in that country within that year, you just go ahead and travel. Uh, but as long as you travel within that one year, you're fine. And uh, I didn't remember reading anything that say that you have to travel within that one year, but when the visa restrictions were a little bit different, that's usually what it mentioned. Uh, so you'll be, you'll be fine on that situation. So uh, we just have to organize ourselves as best as we can and get prepared as best as we can and then use that window of time, of opportunity. Some tours are going to be more time than other tours, but at least we know that we're prepared. All right, thank you very much. Absolutely, and so, uh, other thing for everyone else that's listening, so uh, once these country borders open, most embassies are going to open up. So you're looking at August, September for most of these, uh, you know, for like the Gambia and uh, Ghana embassy to open up and things like that. And the other thing I need to mention for those who are, if you're traveling to South Africa and you're staying there for uh, more than 90 days or more than three months, you're required a visa there as far as a U.S. citizen. So those are another things that everyone may have to look at also when you're traveling to different countries. Be clear on the legality of what's uh, needed and things like that. And my goal is always to do that uh, ahead for everyone. Just like with tickets, we book tickets as a group, so we, have, we run into problems. We're able to adjust it as a group. Uh, so this is my approach to trying to just make sure that we're, things are organized and solutions are, are in place to fix any kind of problems that any of us may have. So, but. Uh, uh, and the strength of everyone, family, I'm gonna do, we're, we're doing our best to make sure that we go on these journeys and make sure that we clear about all the rules, regulations on, on quarantine and anything, because that, that's one thing we're not going to put anyone in a situation in where you're not clear about certain things and we get stranded or stuck at the airport. Uh, so all the tours that we have done, uh, anyone that has traveled with us, is beautiful execution. The only thing that, and the worst thing that has ever happened is we have had, unfortunate a few individuals who have you know, failed to get proper visa or paperwork and either had their trip delayed or not make it to the country and that's like only a few people. 
uh, but uh, you know that's why I'm here to help people. But you have to reach out for me to help you. Uh, so family, uh, let me open things up for other people who have questions in reference to the journey, and I'm hoping that the things that we've gone over in detail uh, is cleared up for a lot of other people that's also listening. All right, so family, anyone have any questions? Uh, it's star six to unmute yourself, and uh, my goal is to do my best to answer as much questions for clarity as far as all updated schedules and what's the game plan as far as uh, us traveling to Africa this year and next year. All right, so family, um, the information I went over, it was just details to go over, but uh, the main thing I'm looking to do is just make sure that uh, we answer everyone's questions or, and give everyone clarity as far as what the future holds, as best as uh, we can um, you know, tactically and strategically deal with. Now, so if you need to send me a private message, you can send one to me on WhatsApp um, outside of the group page, and then if you need to call me, you can call me on the regular mobile line or WhatsApp. And WhatsApp is mainly for when we're not here because we do tours and we're traveling, doing business in and out of the country. So we may not be here all the time on the direct line, but email, same thing, it's accessible wherever we move. Uh, so those are the, those options. So don't ever be someone that calls, calls, and we're on tour, and then you think we disappear. Just send a message on WhatsApp or email. Yes, Mr. Bobani, this is Mr. Sampson calling from New York. I'm just curious, when you finally go to the Gambia, will you be visiting um, BAG? Uh, what we're going to be doing when we get to the Gambia, is we're going to be doing the same thing we do on all schedules. We're going to be doing that tour itinerary schedule. Um, uh, if anyone from the African diaspora or the African continent um, uh, that are good energy wants to meet us at our hotel or want to stop by to say what's up to us, uh, they're more than welcome. Don't have any issue with that. But uh, we have to flow with our schedule, especially in the evening. That's the ideal time to meet up. So uh, you can always reach out to any people that you may like on YouTube or people that you may hear and things like that. But our schedule is limited to us moving in certain directions. Uh, that's why we have a pre oh. And um, Also, Black Acres of the Gambia is not included on that tour. No, it's not uh, included on the tour. Okay. Uh, just like no one of that sort is included on any of our tour. We just have a, we have a okay. tourism schedule. But nevertheless, if you okay. want to reach out to them, and, you know, the hotel is on the, the, the tour itinerary, and say, hey, um, uh, I'd like to meet you and so on, and uh, we're going to be at this hotel, and we're going to be having dinner in the evening at 7 o'clock or so, and if you want to stop by. Uh, that's always good. I always encourage uh, networking, but uh, I don't know anyone in the country like that to to make special visits on their, their property or to just include them in our schedule, like business conference and things like that. Uh, but never against it, uh, but it's something that has to be established. Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, I was happy to be in Ghana this past summer. My husband is from Ghana, and uh, so I got a chance to uh, go to uh, One Africa at the Mabel's restaurant, and everything was fine. And I remember them because of you, through the YouTube, so I made it my business to go, because I've been going to Ghana and Togo over 20 years, and like I said, I'm married to a guy there, and, you know, presently constructing a home there, so that's why I asked those other questions, too, and just keep up the good work, also. Yeah, absolutely, I appreciate the engine. Uh, great question, and, and that's also, I try to expand on that to share with others, uh, uh, just like me and Imacus, we're just, um, we, you know, we just, we've, been, we've been doing business ever since we physically met. You know, you know, we just we talked as two business people, and we made a deal, and we did business like all black people should come together and do business. And since then, you know, we've brought each other a lot of business, and we have helped each other out in a lot of different ways. And we've also worked in energy to, 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 to create a spirit of energy of people who want to repatriate and, and citizenship and other things that have come with other people also connecting together. Um, and, yes, it's so so. definitely unforgettable, and I am from that. I met Mr. Halevi at um, Mabel's restaurant and come to find out we have a lot of things in common and we graduated from the same college where he got me back for years, but we know a lot of the same people, so that was very good. Yeah, and that's one of the beautiful things about repatriation. It's like you're going home to meet your African family in the, on the continent, but also some of your own African family in the diaspora that you have never met. You actually meet them there and you can connect and do, do wonderful things with them, so that's one of the blessings over the years, because there's only a certain mindset of people that actually make these kind of moves. 
So uh, yeah. you're usually in good um, But I'm glad you were able to meet uh, the whole family in one Africa. Uh, wonderful people. I've literally seen them built, the, you know, built it up from not the ground up, but I've literally seen them built it up over the years from 2006 until now. Yes, and finally, I'm so glad you're in Atlanta because I'm originally from Savannah. And as far as Jamaica, I have a lot of friends and stuff there. And I went to school with Grace Jackson um, Small, the runner for track and field for Barcelona. So that's my other hangout. <laughs> Well, that's perfect. Well, well. One of your more permanent hangouts. Oh, yes. Well, after 50 countries and counting, no problem. Yeah, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, I'm talking about what we have here uh, in Ghana is our black uh, pan African community. Service. Yes. So, I have to meet you. I'm determined to meet you one way or the other. I will meet you. We will meet. Yeah, absolutely. I'm here in Georgia, so I welcome all my brothers and sisters that are in the energy of repatriation and African nation building to stop by and let's connect and things like that, or I can always meet individuals out in town um, and so on. Uh, so that's what we have uh, set up, and then we do as much, you know, we'll, um, the more video calls are in the, the private video groups as far as uh, people are traveling with us. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, you know, let's connect, and you can always Thank send you me so much. Okay, text. yes, I will. Thank you so much. I don't want to hold up the line. No, yeah, you're cool, and then I'll save your number, and then we'll communicate. And then let us add you on WhatsApp, and then we just, you know, keep in touch. Yes, please do. Absolutely, my sister. You take care. Okay, well, you want me to email you and give you my number? Uh, yes, uh, email me, or you can text me. Yeah, either or. Okay. And I'm also on WhatsApp. Okay, no problem. I am also. All right, excellent. Thank uh, you. Look forward to linking with you. Uh, 50 countries, uh, that's what's up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, most yes. Yeah, most of West Africa and three times in Egypt. Come here. <laughs> that's oh, we definitely have to talk. You know, that's, you know, that's all yeah, that was in Pisco and Togo. Uh, you you were doing what in Togo? I was a, I, uh, I was in Pisco and Togo, oh, but I have a Togolese family there too. <laughs> that is what's up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'll be I'll be definitely connecting with you between tonight and tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, absolutely, you're welcome. All right, uh, let me meet this line. So our uh, next person is trying to make myself available just to talk to anyone who have any questions. And um, for those who didn't get all the information from the beginning, when I just gave some updates, I will edit this call the next few days and send it out. But that's the best we can do right now with updates. And I just tell everyone just to stay positive. It's frustrating and stressful, but um, these are things that happen to test us to see, you know, because I'm hearing people now saying, you know, they're ready to leave and go to Africa, and they have had all this time to prepare, it, including people like myself, and now we just realize that, you know, we just have to make what we need to have work, which is having ourselves organized and set up in Africa where we can actually move, live, and enjoy paradise, uh, but, you know, instead of going from one rat race to the next. So uh, you know, my whole philosophy of repatriation, us living and doing business in Africa, uh, is uh, you know us as a people having a strong game plan to where you know we just have a situation where we look out for each other and kind of build group economics and can contribute with more to the continent and offer our children in general uh, more opportunities on the continent. Uh, so. Anyway, family, uh, so for those who are not familiar with what I'm talking about, you can always check out uh, the Black Star Pan-African Community link on our website on the main menu, and then that will give you all the details and updates about the project that's on the tour itinerary for Ghana in December as far as land visit and community development. All right, so family, uh, star six to unmute yourself. For those who have any questions, I uh, just want to make sure I answer everyone's questions uh, and get it recorded to share with everyone else. All right, if you need to type your questions on the chat, uh, you can type it on the chat and I'll read it off and answer it. That's another option, but we have uh, about a few more minutes. So I don't want to hold everyone. All right, so family, once again, this is Bwani Tayemba and appreciate everyone joining us uh, tonight and us going through the updates for the coming up schedule and hopefully everybody is clear and everybody is good so
I'll be on standby for any email, texts, phone calls, uh, or anything. And um, you know, one thing else I can say is stay in there and just don't believe the hype and don't get caught up in the moment and then just think about the future and just get prepared. So everyone, you take care. I'm going to unmute everyone. All right, everyone, you're unmuted, so you can say uh, good night to everyone else. Uh, you take care. Good night, everyone. Peace and love, family. Good night. Peace and love. Goodbye. Everybody good take care. Be safe. And talk to you next time.